the Compassionate Geek Podcast with Don Crawley. Now, here's Don. Communication is the process of one person sending a message and another person receiving and understanding it. Communication occurs only when the receiver understands the message the sender intended. That puts the burden of responsibility for communication on the sender. When you are responsible for communicating an idea, a policy, new procedures, or anything else, how do you ensure your message gets through? Sometimes it's helpful to understand a little communication theory to help you make the right choices. There are two communication models that describe most communication. The linear model is one-way, non-interactive communication. Examples could include a speech, a television broadcast, or sending a memo. In the linear model, the sender sends the message through some channels such as email, a distributed video, or an old school printed memo, for example. Noise can affect the successful delivery of the message. Noise could include actual noise, such as that in a factory, emotional noise, such as political biases, or even a lengthy message that spans multiple pages, resulting in TLDR. And if you're not familiar with that, it's too long, didn't read, among the receivers. The transactional model, on the other hand, is two-way interactive communication. In the transactional model, both parties are both sender and receiver. It happens in real time, and generally, they must both be present, even if it's via technology such as Skype. Examples of the transactional model include a face-to-face -face meeting, a telephone call, a Skype call, a chat session, interactive training, or a meeting in which all of the attendees participate by sharing ideas and comments. As with the linear model, noise can affect the communication. Noise can include all of the previous examples. It might even be affected by one person feeling hungry or having gotten into an argument with a family member. Is one model better than the other? No, not at all. It's a matter of choosing the best model under the circumstances and for the type of message. Not only that, but communication can move back and forth between the two models. For example, a training session might start with a lecture, that's the linear model, followed by a question and answer session, the transactional model, then go back to a lecture, the linear model, and then a group discussion, the transactional model. In our world in IT, our jobs are not about technology. Our jobs are about helping our end users do their jobs more productively, creatively, and efficiently. And if it doesn't solve a human problem, then what's the point? In my work with IT people, I help them find ways to show that they care. Competence is critically important, but what we remember is how we were treated, how people made us feel. Most of us can learn people skills. They're simply beliefs and behaviors that can be learned. If you're getting ready to, say, roll out some new software, you might start with a memo detailing the change and the reason for it, the linear model, and follow it up with small group discussions in which you answer questions and concerns about the rollout, the transactional model. It's a matter of realizing that as the sender, you're responsible for the message getting through. Then, being thoughtful about your choice of communication model and selecting the model most appropriate for accomplishing the objective of the communication. I'm Don Crawley. What do you think?